Welcome back to the Go Global Ed podcast, brought to you by the International and Foreign Language Education Team, also known as IFL, in the Office of Postsecondary Education at the U.S. Department of Education. My name is Amy Marion, and today I'll be your host. On our last episode of the podcast, we spoke to Cornell's Bill Phelan about the Undergraduate International Studies and Foreign Language Program, also known as USEFUL, which is a Title VI grant administered by IFL. The grant has supported Cornell's international and foreign language instruction on their campus and at several partner schools within the New York Community College Consortium. To build on that conversation, today on the podcast, I speak with Dr. David Flatten, a professor of history at Tompkins Cortland Community College, also referred to as TC3, located in upstate New York. TC3 offers degrees and certificates in more than 40 academic programs. On the podcast, David tells me about his experience working with Cornell on the USEFUL grant and how their collaboration has supported various internationalization efforts at TC3. Dr. David Flatten, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you very much, Amy. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? I have been teaching in higher education in three different states for over 20 years, but I've just had the ability working with Cornell University in the last few years to get deeper involved in some international study affairs curriculum development, but also to try and bridge some ideas whereby we could have students at my uh, State University of New York system community college work with Cornell students potentially on some joint programming. And the uh, USL useful grant uh, was one of the components that was brought to me from Cornell as a way for us to try and make those dreams come true, to go from conversations about, gee, wouldn't it be nice, to actually deploying some significant efforts in coordinating some things between my institution and Cornell. And that's that's how I came to this, this basic uh, uh, grant opportunity. So I spoke with Bill Phelan, who is a program manager at Cornell University, and he told us about the connections with Tompkins Cortland Community College, the useful grant, and the Community College International Fellows Program. Could you tell me about your involvement with that? Yes. One of the one of the things that we've been looking for at uh, my community college is to be able to expand our curriculum and to take it in different directions where we we really haven't been able to do so before. And the useful grant uh, through Cornell was very instrumental in putting together some curriculum development ideas that I had, uh, as well as some other faculty members, both full and part time at TC3. Uh, In my case, what I was looking at was I was trying to kind of reinvigorate uh, some of the aspects of how I teach Western civilization as well as modern American history. And I've been relying on some significant uh, uh, sources again and again for the Cuban Revolution, for example, or uh, some passing glances at the uh, U.S. intervention in Chile. And when I was speaking with Bill uh, about the useful grant, I saw it as a wonderful opportunity for me to take some of those ideas. And so what I did was I I created some different curriculum units. I worked with uh, several different professors at Cornell who were very instrumental in in giving some some ideas and some concepts of uh, directions to take my ideas in transforming my curriculum. And then um, I was able to, in many ways, take some, you know, the the conversations and put them into some uh, more concrete form. And we were able then to go back and create uh, some significant curriculum development area changes. And then also, uh, as part of that, um, I've had both uh, Cornell advanced graduate students as well as Cornell teaching faculty come and be guest speakers and lecturers in my course courses to really invigorate and take the information in different ways. So I have I found this cooperation in regards to the grant to be very instrumental in not only uh, bridging some gaps to Cornell, but also being able to take those sort of curriculum ideas, gee, wouldn't it be nice again, and then be able to uh, have some reinforcement, be able to get some resources, especially I was able to purchase a significant number of books as well as some access to various things like the Cornell Library, uh, and then of course the extensive field of their electronic contacts. And that was presented to me as an option through the US, uh, the useful grant. And I found it very enriching. I think my students were very happy with the changes and I have kept them in my curriculum and I continue to use them to this day. That's wonderful. So you are really looking to reinvigorate, transform the classroom experience. Yes. Um, that, yeah. And that was, that was where the, the useful grant could be that sort of like shot in the arm 
to kind of push you over the top from the armchair, gee, wouldn't it be nice I should talk about and do this, to actually then going ahead and doing it. So I had uh, both, for example, uh, Professor uh, Kenneth Roberts and uh, Professor Ray Crabe from Cornell come and give lectures to my students and take that to the next level in terms of they were able to bring in expertise way beyond anything I could do. And that that was courtesy of the grant as well as we, as we were tying the university and the uh, community college together. Ah, that's great. So were you able to travel to Chile? Yes. One of the things that working with uh, professors uh, Roberts and Crabe were uh, that each of them has been involved in uh, Chile uh, history and political science in, for many numbers of years. And they, have, of course, have uh, publishing records. But for for me, the ability then was I could come into uh, Chile and go down there with the Cornell umbrella to assist me. Um, I was working on behalf of my institution, which has its own global um, uh, study abroad office, and uh, I didn't have this, the support there because we just don't, we don't have that kind of finances. But I was able to go down as a, an honest faculty member, deeply involved in Latin America, going back to my service in the Peace Corps back in the in the late 80s, all the way through the 10 different uh, courses that I've led to uh, Latin America, especially Guatemala and to, to Colombia. And the hope was that uh, using sort of the good offices, as it were, of Cornell to open some doors, I was able to meet some people and have some significant meetings with people uh, inside of Santiago at uh, places like uh, uh, the Diego Portales, one of the major universities in the city, um, as well as uh, speak with some other people, either just electronic email or some phone calls uh, with uh, places out like uh, Vigna del Mar and uh, Inacap inside the city. I, I really felt that the Cornell, um, uh, what they could offer me was that they could open doors and sort of vouch for me that, you know, here's this professor. He's not down here on vacation. He's down here to try and make some significant connections. Um, you may not be, uh, you know, you may be a Chilean uh, technical university, for example, that is not uh, really easily compatible with the programming at Cornell, but you could be with the two-year community college that I represent in terms of many of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the AAS degrees, the degrees that are two years and then lead to employment in the hospitality industry, in business, in accounting. So I, I found that the, the Cornell assistance I had with meeting people and making connections and sort of vouching for me was what I needed. And then I had the impetus to go out on my own and visit these people. And they knew they were not wasting their time with some visiting professor. They they knew that I was representing something larger. And, and of course, unfortunately, in the meantime, we had, of course, COVID intervene. And a lot of our, our plans have gone off track, but they are then ready for revival as um, I go back into the, the uh, you know, the spring of 2022, thinking about how I can revitalize some of the aspects of study abroad at my institution. Um, and I really am looking forward to that. That's one of my, my sort of dynamics. I got to do this kind of things on my list um, for 2022. Okay. Yeah. So that's, it sounds like the Cornell connection really helps kind of add structure to your time abroad. Uh, it, clearly you've traveled to, to Latin America before, but just having those additional connections really helps you pull out what you needed while you were there and bring that back to your Absolutely. community. Are there any particular, like maybe one example of something that you learned when you were down there or a connection you made? You mentioned like the technical college, how that might mesh well with the TC3 community. Yes, uh, we we have had at my uh, community college here in New York State, we've had a long track record of working with um, uh, educational institutions in the Dominican Republic, also in Peru and in, in Colombia. And the 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 difficulty has always been, of course, the exchange rate between those currencies and the dollar is always very difficult. But also uh, the idea that we can offer programming, whether it's reinforcing English language or uh, say like farm to bistro kind of programming for they say the hospitality industry or um, even like things like international business. We have seen those programs kind of hang in there in the last couple of years, but they have not been thriving. So we did have connections with Chile years and years ago. Uh, but the institutional memory had, had had lost track of that. And one of my goals was to try and, and reinvigorate that. So I was thinking in terms of, of especially some of the technical uh, colleges that I was looking at in Chile, um, they're looking more and more, especially at the hospitality industry. Um, Chile has been become, well, has become a really major player in trying to bring in um, uh, tourism. 
and has really created a, a significant uh, support mechanism for that in terms of infrastructure, advertising, and things like that. But one of the key elements that I thought I could bring in was that my institution does have a significant hotel restaurant management industry um, certification. We also work with the Farm to Bistro program where we have our own farm and we you know grow products for our for our restaurant, and then of course uh, general business and things like that. So I was thinking that there could be some natural connections there of mutual interest back and forth. And um, I was just kind of setting the table. I wasn't going to be able to dictate who was interested or whatever, but I thought that I was uh, was really, uh, you know, an, an adequate ambassador to say, well, you know, you may not know about us, but check this out. And then actually, when I did go to one of the, um, the technical universities in Santiago, I sit down and we're kind of going around the room doing introductions. And I say where I'm from, and I explain that I'm from upstate New York. And this guy kind of in the back starts chuckling. Well, he had actually been to uh, New York. He'd been to the university at Binghamton as a student years ago, and he was very familiar with uh, everything I was talking about. And, you know, we had sort of a full circle kind of moment here that, you know, he had been as a, a student from Chile in New York. And now we're talking about trying to get New York and Chilean students back in communication. And uh, he, uh, it, it, was a, it was kind of a laughable moment. It was, it was funny just to see that kind of, yeah, you, oh, you've been there? And then, of course, the first comment was, man, is it still cold there? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it is. And it is. Well, that's great that you're able to tease out those various connections down there back to your home institutions. So believe it or not, it's almost 2022. Uh, so where do you see this going in the future? I know COVID is definitely a factor that's um, a challenge for everybody, but what does the future hold for uh, internationalization at TC3 and beyond and with the useful grant? Yeah, I, I suspect as an academic uh, and also as somebody who is a, a, a tourist who has traveled widely, I think there's a significant pent up demand. Uh, amongst not only parents, but also students um, for international experiences, uh, cultural exchanges, uh, improvement of language skills, um, you know, potential for internships. Now, I, I'm not I'm not the magic guru who can wave a wand and make those things happen, but I, I suspect if I'm correct, and many people are saying the same thing, that with that pent up demand, I think there will be a significant element of different universities at all levels, two and four year to really start to think about what's best for their students and that those opportunities could potentially lie with overseas partners and work some kind of arrangements that maybe at one point it's always easy to say no. It's always to say, it's always easy to say, oh, it's too hard to do that. But if there is a pent up demand and if there is a significant economic element where people can see, for example, uh, in Chile, more and more Americans are coming and they are looking at improving services uh, for this, the tourists and get them to, in many ways to be, you know, not just in the tourism sites, but to travel more widely in the country. I think there will then be a political and economic support for the idea of exchanges of various kinds. Now, I, I don't I don't have any, like I said, magic wand, but I suspect that we are on the cusp of a significant explosion in not only international tourism, but also with the idea of international academic exchanges of various kinds. Um, I, for example, was uh, I was uh, uh, I was awarded a, a Fulbright to be in Colombia, and unfortunately, uh, COVID has intervened. And um, the first thing I'm thinking about now is when I'm going to reapply and get back down there and try to help build some bridges, not only for for my my university, but also for the larger cohort of uh, of people that I know across both the United States and Colombia who are looking for those connections. And sometimes it's just a matter of okay, well, you should really talk to X, Y, and Z, and then those people turn out to know somebody, who, and then the conversations roll, and you never know where they're going to land. But I suspect that there is a pent-up demand and that we are on the cusp of that exploding. This has been really great. Thank you, uh, David, for joining us on the podcast. Thank you for talking today, Amy. Thanks for listening to the Go Global Ed podcast, a production of the International and Foreign Language Education Office at the U.S. Department of Education. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Go Global Ed and subscribe to our newsletter to learn more about upcoming podcast episodes and other Eiffel updates.